I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Blackstock. Here. Mr. Horn. Here. Mr. Fatsalis. Here. Mr. Boda. Here. Mr. Simons. Here. Cram here. Mr. Knotts is excused. Okay. Um, would you follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we have the approval of the agenda. Um, as you can see, we changed it here. It's new to me, but we got a, one more item on there. So if anybody else has any deletions or addition to the agenda, if not, a motion to accept as presented. I'll, I'll make, make a mo that motion. We accept the agenda as presented. Support. It's been moved and supported that we accept the agenda as presented. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have approval on the minutes of October 6, 2014. If there are no additions or deletions, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as of October 6, 2014, as presented. Support. Then moved and supported that we approve the minutes of October 6. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same. Motion carries. Moving on to public comment. Anybody in the audience like to speak to anything that's not on the agenda? Okay, seeing none. We have the consent agenda. We have C1, September 2014, Marine City Fire Report. C2, September 4, 2014, Beautification Committee Minutes. C3, October 1. 2014 Historical Commission Minutes, C4, September 2014 St. Clair Fire Report, C5, September 3, 2014 Historical Commission Minutes, C6, September 2014 Investment Income Report, C7, Estimated September Revenue and Expenditure Report. Comment. Okay, Don. Uh, if you notice on the Marine City Fire Report, we've got an additional four more calls to River Bend. And the last, yeah, there was four. The last two reports, yeah, we had four this time, five last time. And the last two reports, we've had nine calls to that facility. And it's uh, all I to the same know, person. Yeah, I just want to know: Are we filing the insurance claims? We build the owner of the river bend directly. They have been paying it. Uh, we do it annually at the end of the year. Uh, it's getting kind of excessive. I don't know if we well, should start. Way, maybe. It's getting to be way excessive because I said before, probably in the last 15 years, we've had over 100 calls out there. It's ridiculous. Do you want me to call the owners and yes. have a discussion? Well, uh, maybe they'll do something I would hope, but I don't know. You talk to the people and they don't seem to do anything about it. I'll call them and uh, and see what you know what's going on there. It's, it seems to me it's understaffed most of the time is what's causing us to be out there. It's uh, from what talking to the fire department, they said most of the time it's to aid them to get somebody Back picked up that's on the floor that they can't lift up or something. So but a lot of times they got both the the EMS and them. There. And sometimes they've been toning out the EMS and just the fire department's been going. Right. But Larry. I, would it do any good to, to call and question him? He's just going to tell you, I'll have you here as many times as I want. I'm paying for it. Right. I mean, if he's paying his bill, if you're billing him, he's paying it. He's just going to tell you, well, I mean, Are there if he not? wasn't paying it, I could understand questioning him, but he's but if he's paying the bill. Well, I'll check on the payment uh, where he's at with that, too. And aren't there specific requirements if you're going to run a facility like that, that you have to have the staff there to handle? I mean, if they're injured, you need to have EMS come, but... If they fall out of the bed, you're supposed to have staff there to handle that. You're not supposed to call EMS every time somebody's out of their bed. I, it's just, I'm yeah, just wondering. I, I think it warrants something looking into a little more extensive than what we're doing. And I can have the fire chief go with me, too, and he can explain their ex actually what they're doing. I, I got a question on the check registers there, uh, Larry. Okay. I noticed it's in the 
second column down, there's a check made out. The aims we haven't gotten the check. No, no, we're, we're not there yet. We're not there. We're still on the consent okay, agenda. Okay, okay. I thought that was part of the consent no, agenda. No, okay. we're still on the consent. I saw this. Never mind. Before. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Support. It has been moved and supported that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now we're moving on to disbursements. We have bills of $22,872.97. We have a payroll of $20,013.17. We have ACH payments of $20,352.56. We have a tax account of $56,051.30 for a total disbursement of $119,290. I'll make a motion to pay the bills in the amount of $119,290.90. I, I, I got a question on the check register then yes, on this one. Okay. There's a bill in there for Ames Plumbing. Is that because our employee pulled his license and we had to hire an outsider? Correct. It was $3,060. Correct. And that was also, part of that, Don, was the Boulder Creek. We had to hire him to help us in Boulder Creek that night. We had all that flooding up okay. there. Um, he charged us actually $50 a day for the license and I had to, I paid him at the same rate that, I, that the city of Marine City paid him for the hours he reported. And I thought that was fair, and he bailed us out of a situation, and I'm quite grateful to Rick Ames. Well, was that, that because the employee pulled his license? We had to hire this outside one? The only reason the employee pulled his license is because he was not given that job. He does not need that license to do his job. Okay. But, just, yes, that's what it was about. Just questioned it. Okay. I got one myself. It's okay. yours. Down just under the middle of the page. It's a CSX Transportation Incorporated. It's pipeline encroachment. Three hundred dollars. This was this is an annual thing that we pay. I'll have around. to find out about that, Don. I don't know. I'll have to find out what that is. That may be something to do with the uh, railroad crossings. I think we pay something to the county or something for that. But okay. I'll have to check on that. CSX? Yeah, CSX. Yeah. It's annual. Any other questions on that? If not, we have a motion. Do we have a second to I'll pay the bills? Support. It's been moved and supported that we pay the bills in the sum of $119,290.00. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Boda. Yes. Mr. Petsalis. Yes. Mr. Horn. Yes. Mr. Blackstock. Yes. Cram, yes. Mr. Simons. Yes. Motion carries. All right, we're moving on to new business. We got Burnham and Flowers, general liability renewal. Um, Mr. Clever is here. Good evening, and thank you to the board for allowing me to spend just a few minutes with you this evening regarding this property and liability policy renewal. There should be a proposal in your packet, and I will... Mr. Simons, uh, be, because we go over this and have gone over this uh, a number of times, do you want me to go into detail or just to answer any questions that any board member may have? And then we do have on the last page some options for your consideration this year. Um, I think the board's pretty familiar with it. Do you want to answer well, questions? I've got one question. For yes, sir. Did you guys not get one? I never received it one of those. It came in a new packet that arrived in the mail today. I got mine. So yeah, it wasn't in the uh, original packet. Mine. Oh, really? No. Okay, so it, it might be in the mail. I didn't get the mail today, so it's probably in my thing, too. You didn't right. get one either? No, I didn't. no, I didn't get it either. It wasn't in the original packet. It came in the <clears> back. 
Okay, Larry, the question I've got. I can't ask anything until I can see this. Page 15. Property coverage continues the title. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, you, on that page we have the address of the museum, 696 Meisner. They have the building is $292,000. The contents you got is zero dollars. And the year built, you got 1800. Well, it was built in 1872, but the present building was built in 1872. We, we will uh, make that change. Sometimes, Don, if, if we don't have an exact number, we'll, we'll throw one out there and, and uh, obviously we'll make that, that adjustment. Regarding contents, do the contents of that building belong to the township or to a historical society? I would say the township. I would say the township. And there are some private items that are on loan to us. Okay. <clears throat> there are several pieces that are probably uh, valid, but you can't put it, you can't place a value on them. Just a couple of items, but still they're in there. When, when we do these renewals, and I, I, I'm assuming, and I know I shouldn't do that, but, but we more than likely got that information a year ago to quote, and then when we send the schedules for review, we'll basically ask township employees or uh, officials to look at that to give us the dollar amount that you want there. We certainly can add any dollar amount that you want. And because we are having this conversation, if something happens between now and when we get a number, you have coverage. Okay. We just need to, we, we you just- give you a number, I'd go crazy trying to figure out a number of all the items that are in the museum. It's, it's a hard thing to try and Value, I suppose. Let, let me toss out a couple things and see if I can get any, any idea or consensus here. The property and contents coverage is literally the least expensive coverage that you purchase. Not exactly, but in the neighborhood of a dollar fifty cents per thousand. We put a hundred thousand on there, it costs you an extra hundred and fifty dollars and so on. So I don't know if 100,000 is a number, a good number, a low number, a high number, what your, what your feelings might be. And as you said, in reality, there's many items that, that can't be replaced. Right. Well, yeah, I, I would question the contents on a couple other things. Mr. Blackstock pointed it out. 205 Recor Ward Storage Building, it has no contents coverage. Uh, we may have inland marine or mobile equipment contents there. Would these be tools, things that you use to, to then those would be covered elsewhere. Okay. Unless, in contents, we're talking tables, desks, chairs, those things that don't travel from the buildings. Okay. So I, uh, Mr. Blackstock, I think we're okay there. Yeah, but uh, Mr. Boat is right. We should have something on the contents of that museum because we've got a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. That's uh -huh. what that figure is. I couldn't be, to be honest, I wouldn't know what to pull. Well, should we have the, uh, should you take it back to the Historical Commission and have them try to come up with some value? I mean, well, I can put a call to the chair, chairperson. Let, let me suggest this. The, the, the people that do the underwriting and uh, uh, actuarial tables for the, the Michigan Township participating plan a couple years ago, don't ask me why, $300 is the magic number. If your additional premium is less than 300, th they won't send you a new invoice. 
If you credit something and the return premium is less than 300, we're not going to send you a check back. It all just evens out in the following year. My recommendation would be let me, when I call into the office tomorrow morning, put $100,000 on contents. There will be no bill. When you get the hard number, whether it's higher or lower, we can adjust it and either bill you or again, if it's less than $300 invoice, there'll be no, there'll be no uh, additional premium on that. Okay. Would, would that, that sound? Fair. That fair. Yeah, at least we have something yeah. there. Like Don says, some of it's irreplaceable, so it wouldn't matter if you had a million dollars, yeah. it wouldn't. Okay. Is that good, Don? Yeah, I can I can do with that. Okay. I'll call the chair person yep. tomorrow when you get something going. But again, because we've had this conversation, you right now are covered for $100,000 in contents there. Okay. I'm wondering, do we yep. need to? We have the same thing over on Springborn Road on a DPW garage. Yeah, I'm really just no, nothing for the contents. Uh, and we have equipment in there. Mr. Horn, would would it, again would that be equipment that is used to work on the facilities and may not stay in that facility? Tools and those kinds of things. If they are then you would find that coverage in uh, blanket coverage that shows up on page, pa starts on page uh, 20, runs 20, 21, and well, all the way through 23. But there will be a number of, of uh, items there that I believe would relate to that facility. I, I, I could be wrong, but... Uh, under Department of Public Works, on page 21, we have a total of $205,269 yes. of covered, I see them all itemized here now. covered equipment. Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. And that's the, the, the challenge, I guess, if you will. The inland marine, we have to schedule and insure differently because it has coverage wherever it is. The contents literally have to be within 1,000 feet of the building. Now, when you originally did all this, did you actually go out and do an inspection at these locations, or you work off of what we tell you? Work off of what you tell us, okay. yes. Maybe this is something that needs some looking more yeah, looking into. Yeah, it's just came to a separate it, it, It's yeah. always yeah. our recommendation, and I don't know whether you have, for accounting purposes, a complete listing and schedule of, of all township-owned that that's a good source of double checking to make sure that we're on on track here the the good news if you will is the likelihood of a total loss is relatively light and in these coverages especially the inland marine coverage you have $141,920 of unscheduled property so things that don't appear here, a bucket full of $141,000 worth of other. So you're probably okay. It's those big items that we're always concerned with. Well, that 140 some thousand, that would cover like hand tools, a hand saw, stuff like that. Yes. You know? Yeah. Okay. Here's a cover sheet for that too. And this is a renewal, and we've had used to our liability for quite a while. Is that what? We we have traded this with uh, with Nickel and Saf. I have told this story before. My first night as an agent with the Burnham and Flower Company, I spent here. Uh, I, I sat there because I didn't even know how to spell insurance at that point. But uh, I I spent uh, that uh, evening here, and I don't remember whether we won it or lost it. But about every three years or so, Steve Saff and I trade the business back and forth. This will be our second year. Right. This is a renewal for 12 months? This is a renewal for 12 months, dated November 1st, 2014. Just a, a couple things I want to point out. 
in losses for the last year, there have been none. You're our kind of people. There was one claim for someone that fell. That is an open claim. It is still open. There's been no charge against it. In terms of last year's premium, we were $16,385. This year, $15,902. I'm sorry, how much was it last year? It, last year it was $16,385. So uh, about $400 down. I can't do that math in my head going backwards, but I think it's about 400 bucks. Now, there, there are a couple of options on that last page, page 27. And they are as follows. We have, you put at some point in time, and I think this goes back quite some time, $5,000 deductibles on your liability coverage. To remove those deductibles would increase your premium by $1,165. In other words, if there is a liability claim, we would pay from first dollar, you would not have that $5,000 deductible, gonna increase your premium just a little bit. Your inland marine and electronic data processing deductibles currently are at $1,000. If you take those up to 2,500, that gives you a $23 credit. So it's $1,000 if we take it up to $2,500? No, it's, it's 1000 now. It's 1000 now. If we go now. to 25 we're right. going to save so 23 bucks. More risk on our part. Yeah, that one I don't recommend. The, the liability uh, deductible you might want to consider. Um, well, the only thing I'm thinking, you just got through saying we never had a claim last year, so we're going to spend an extra $1,165. I mean, I'm not saying we're not going to have yeah. a claim, but that's kind of our goal, yeah. to not have a claim. Um, yeah. And in a way, you, you self-insure that, that first 5000 Right. Typically, and liability the, the, claims tend to be higher than... The thousand sixty-five or eleven sixty-five. We're changing the deductible from five thousand to what? To zero. It goes to, to zero. zero. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I missed that part. Sorry. Yeah. And you're right. If there ever is a liability, it's definitely going to be over five thousand dollars. Yeah. So I mean, one claim would make up the difference because we'd have to pay five thousand. The first five thousand dollars, correct? That is correct. But then the more claims we do have, that's going to drive the fifteen thousand up too. Correct. When we have claims. Correct. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's a. Your, your premium is based on three things typically what you own, the current market conditions, and it's still relatively competitive and relatively soft, so you're in good shape there, just by evidence the fact that your premium came down, and what your claims history has been. And typically, we'll use that on a five-year rolling history, a five-year rolling average. And I think our five years, we haven't probably paid that deductible once in five years, I don't believe. There, there were some things a number of years ago, right. but I don't believe that deductible was paid, no. I don't think we, I know we've had a couple of times where we've, we've actually paid for different things that were you know, under the 5,000 because we knew we had that 5,000 deductible. Yeah. Uh, it's up to the board if they want to. I mean, we're saving $400, so 400 off of the 11, you know, you're talking about really, in essence, it's a $700 increase on what we had last year. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to get, I got two other options. As okay. you consider, please consider okay. these also. The bottom option is to decrease the property deductible. It's now at 2,500. If you decrease that to 1,000, that increases premium by a modest $63. And that's if? Your, your property deductible now is 2,500. You'll pay the first 2,500. If we take it to 1,000, lower the 
deductible, you'll pay the first uh, $1,000. That will increase your premium by $63. That don't sound bad, that one. No, that one is, yeah. that one's pr pretty, pretty much on, on your side, if you will. Well, give me an example of our property damage. Like, what would it be? I mean, a building gets yeah. run into. A million curtains? Curtains would be covered, yes. Because they cost us $2,800 last year to replace them. They were damaged during the winter last winter. It, it would have to be a covered cause of loss. Do you remember what, what that loss was or how it happened. We have roll-up curtains in the pavilion and they were damaged over the winter. Somebody vandalized them. Oh, them down. yeah, absolutely would have coverage there. Yeah. yeah. We paid 2800 to fix them. Yeah. Two for two new curtains. Well, the deductible is 2500 so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I'm saying if you lower it to it's a thousand. Correct. But they you know, but we, we sometimes do have damage in the park. You know, that would be over probably a thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, like the gates get an extra sixty-three dollars. That's a, I thought it was a good deal. <coughs> but then you make claims, and then next year they raise your rates because you claimed those. You didn't pay the twenty-eight. You made a claim instead, and guess what? Now your rate's going to go up because you made those claims. Uh, again, remember the five-year rolling average. Right. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. But I, you know, I mean, it's 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 one of those things. Hopefully that, we're I, I've got something I want to talk to you about that also, but let me get this last. Okay. The last option is called non-monetary suit defense. Insurance was never designed to pay legal fees unless you had a claim or unless there was a damage or a lawsuit. Over the last few years, with Call Sam and a number of others always encouraging everyone to sue everyone for everything. We have added non-monetary suit defense. The premium is $500. The, uh, the benefit is a $100,000 annual attorney fee. So if someone sues this township saying, I don't want any money, but I want you to change that ordinance so that I can do this. And if you won't, then I'm going to take you to court. It's designed 50, excuse me, $50,000 per uh, incident, $100,000 per year maximum. Hmm. I have a number of townships that have taken it. I have a number of townships that feel it's not anything that is necessarily in their best interest. But I wanted to give you all those so that you could consider as you're, <coughs> as you're looking at this, this renewal. Do you have terrorism coverage anywhere in here? Or this, this, this is included in the package, the terrorism coverage. I know last year we, because of the dates, we actually moved this to the, right. the after, right the, at the, the, after the fact. And our yeah. next meeting is, isn't it like the 3rd of November? So I'm yes. assuming we could do this. The only reason I'm questioning that is because some of the members did not get their packet. So they didn't get to look at any of this yet. Certainly. And I apologize for that. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. I'm just we'll looking at it for first time. So. Uh -huh. So you're saying you want them? Well, just these, <coughs> the these additional options. Well, last time we had, it's, it starts effective November 1st. They're not going to not mm -hmm. give us coverage, which is what we did last time when we switched. The other guy covered us until we had our meeting and we made it official. He would just continue our coverage. <coughs> and then, because I think some of these options, unless everybody knows what they want to do right now. Well, I guess we could, we could it. approve the renewal and then we could always call you with the options and you could add those to us. You can do that at any time. Don's going to get a number to me on the you know, we're going to contents. Do that anyways, so. yeah, that'd be the best to do. And we can talk it over at the next meeting. Yeah, talk the on these options. I mean, obviously we don't have any competitor here, so it's not like we, we're not going to renew. It's just these options. 
But that's, I mean, that's up to the board if they want to make the a coverage. Coverage is a, the I know the, the one was $63 the same, on that. Again, I, I did not get a copy of it. So Increase of deductible. Compared to last, our one. last year, all of the coverages remain the same. It, it, no, you dropped. It, it, no, the no, no, cost, the, the but cost the coverage drop, is but the all the same. Dollar oh. coverage amounts. Yes, th this is a duplication of last year's policy, with a reduction in premium, <coughs> and these these options. But these options are above and beyond. Right, They'll that's be the above stuff the I thought. That that is correct. Right, that so that's correct. why I thought if we renewed and then left the options, so everybody had a chance to get their packet, look at it. Yeah, have I an like opinion that. on those. Any more comments on that, Andrew? How do you feel about uh, that? that? We That's can go fair. ahead and uh, <coughs> you know award uh, we the approve. coverage and then just add whatever we want. I mean, I like I said, I'd like to. Yeah, take I want to look time. it over and take a look at everything because okay. I didn't get it either. Yeah, I apologize for you didn't get that. So we can just go ahead and uh, I think approve the the coverage and just let him know on what additions we might need. Okay. So somebody is that a motion then uh, to do that? Um, if you'd like to be made as a motion, I could make it as a motion. Yes. Okay. We'll support. I'll, oh, yeah. I'll oh, yeah. support that motion then too. We have a motion to accept the renewal of the contract that we had last year with forthcoming uh, additions as we complete them at our next meeting. The renewal is 15902. 15902 plus, well, we don't know, depending if we do the additions or not. Yeah, the then options. that'll be coming. Uh, I'll call you after the third and let you know if there's That's any fine. additions. And who was the support? I'm sorry. I support. Okay. Mr. Boda. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Blackstock. Yes. Mr. Horn. Yes. Mr. Petsalis. Yes. Mr. Boda. Yes. Cram, yes. Mr. Simons. Yes. Motion carries. May, may I have two minutes? Sure. Especially since I think you've got somebody from Parks and Rec here. The chairman. Yes. Good. <laughs> you have been back in the PAR plan effectively a year and now are eligible to apply for a grant. The grants are modest. They are a maximum of $5,000. The information regarding these grants is in this packet, which I'll leave with your clerk. But the PAR plan is very interested in helping our customers, our clients, be more safe, resulting in fewer claims. And these grants, they seem to go in cycles. Right now, they seem really, really interested in awarding grants to Parks and Rec for security lighting, security cameras, security systems, soft fall material, those kinds of things. The grant submission period is open now until the end of November, and the awards will be made in January. There is a list in here of the grants that were awarded for the July period and then some just some ideas and information that you might find helpful. It is a lot of times when you hear grant you think 300 pages and you're first born. This is two or three pages plain paper relatively easy and straightforward. I recommend to all of my customers Try to have a list. These things come out twice a year. Try to have a list where you've always got a grant going in. And I've had a couple of my clients that have won more than one grant already. Uh, How are the grants approved? Is it like on a timely basis, first come, first serve, or is it? The, the process is basically you submit the grant request. The grant committee made up of township officials will pour through the applications. I think last time we had 56 applications. They awarded 39 of those. Okay. So, a, you know, a okay. pretty good track record. Yes, it is. Um, is there a monetary value like you have at your peak? Like 5,000. No, but that's what we can ask for. But as far as, I mean, do you give out like 100,000? Oh, their, their goal is 40 per period. 
So that would be a maximum of 200,000 oh, okay. per grant award. Now they haven't hit that uh, for a number of reasons. Some is that they haven't had 40 uh, uh, you know, approved or they haven't, all of them haven't been $5,000. You, when we tell you yes, you go ahead and complete the project, pay the bill, submit the invoice for us uh, to reimburse you. Okay. You, we, and then it could be done in the spring. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, those things that you begin and then say, we'd like a grant on this, we can't even consider. It's those that are out there that uh, and have not. Be by November? The, November 30th is the deadline. All my contact information is in this packet also. And as you may be working on this, please. Don't hesitate to contact okay. me. That's a good thing. It yeah, is a good thing. Good. We've had That's we've a lot had of grants put out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Great for our parks. Sure. For our playground. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Fences. Yeah. Just putting fences up. Okay. Moving on to uh, paving Springborn Road 2015. As you can see, there's nothing in your packet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the county road commission called and said they're having they're so far Thank backed you. up right that now, they I'm, can't get the road. Have a safe paid. one. Um, they've been one. they've got it surveyed. Um, they just they don't think they can get it in a timely manner before the weather gets cold. So they're asking them to postpone it till next year. So my question was, well, what about our hundred thousand dollar county match money? And they said, well, we'll carry that over till next year. Um, I said, well, we've allotted our match in our budget, you know, which we've budgeted for. We have that money, but we can carry that over also. So the next thing I said, well, um, could we possibly finish this whole project next year then? And he said, well, there is more money available that didn't get used up in 2015. See, we're supposed to sit out in right, we have 2015. To sit out a year. Well, all the money was not... Um, spoken for in the county road fund through St. Clair County. So if you see at the bottom of our thing, we've got a resolution here to the, to the local uh, road funding system assistance program. So we're, the county is advising us to apply for 2015 money. And then I talked to Mr. Hazelton, the engineer, and he said that we could possibly do the whole project next year, prep it, pave it, be done. And in reality, I think if you remember when I told you about the last time when we had to sit out for the 2015, it's going to cost us a little more money to sit out that year. It's roughly $20,000. So this project is going to save us $20,000 if we can do it all next year. Plus, we'll get the county match money, and we'll be eligible in 2016 for another match. Okay, that's so that's what I was going to ask. So they're not going to push us back a year because no, so no. Our 2016 if, is still our year. Apply, we'll get it all three years. Right. We did this once before years. several years ago. I think uh, Supervisor Randolph got that. Yes. There was The money wasn't used up in the county road fund. Right. And I'm not saying we're going to get it, but there's a good chance we are because it all goes by the point system, and we're in the process of filling that application out. And it'll be the same application that we filled out for the 2014 um, improvements. So Would that be for 100000 also? Yeah, they'll mm -hmm. all be for 100000 yeah. So but we I have, have to, to put into our budget next year. Our budget, we have to put into there for next year. For another 100000 to match that. Well, right? it's a little bit more than that. We have to match the hundred, but we have to pay for the rest of the project. And the project is roughly, um, I think it's 465 Okay, so they'll give us two, so we'd have to come up with the other 265 And we, uh, we uh, allotted this year two fifty or 153 so I only got to come up with a hundred, little over 100000 Yeah. So... I, I think it's a win-win for us yeah. if we can get it. And we, I understand we're going to save the 20 if we do it all in one and not separate it. Right. But a, 
I thought that it was okay to, like it was good to let the road settle. Are they going to do part early and then the other part later? Are they going to yeah, do well, it all at once? Well, well, part of that 20000 was they when they come back to pave it, then they got to regrade it again and, oh, and do okay. some more work. Yeah, but they're going to compact it all with rollers and that. And okay. Just like they would build a normal road. road right. The road right. is pretty yeah. stable right now, so yeah. they're, they're not really going to disturb it. They're going to No, they're going to make the, di move the culverts out and do this. They did the surveying, but. They're just slammed with the um, with the work at the county right now, so I think it's a win win for the, the township. Um, but more to come on that. Are really, the only action we got to take is at the end is that resolution when we get down to it. Okay. But that's what that's about, and I just wanted to explain to you: Does that sound like something that we want to do? Um, I would think so. Yes. Okay. So I'll keep working on that. Okay. Next, we have a. Motion to apply for the 2014 St. Clair County Park Millage funds. Um, and what that is is the the uh, tax money that we get from the Parks and Rec for the uh, for our Parks and Rec from the county. We have to have a a um, project in mind for that money, and we have to designate that money. And that you guys have designated for the canoe launch. Is that, am I correct? So yep. all we're doing is approving that that's what we're going to do with that money. We, we also have another year set aside towards the canoe launch. I think it's 2012's money. Um, I think it's 2012 that was set aside for the canoe launch. So I hope by your next meeting I will have um, what we've done this year, what we plan to do next year, what kind of money we have ready to go for those projects. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that we apply for the 2014 county park money as requested by the Parks Commission. Support. Okay, it's been moved and supported that we apply for the 2014 St. Clair County Parks Millage Fund money. Is there any further discussion? Does it say to defer to 2015? Okay. Yes. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, roll call, please. It does say deferred. Yes. All right. She wanted oh, on the motion? In the motion to have it but, it's the, for but it's the 2014 money that we're 2014 getting. 2014 money, but it needs to be deferred for 2015 to be used for the canoe launch. Because okay. we're not going to use it in 2014. Because of the time frame we're at now. Okay. All right, so I, I guess you have to restate your motion to defer it to the 2015. You just read the motion the way it is right there. Right here is. Okay, so this move to apply to the St. Clair County Parks and Rec Department for the 2014 millage distribution funds in the amount of $15,598.61 for the following project to be deferred for use in 2015 for the Bell River Park Improvement can Canoe Launch Site. And you supported that, Herb? Yes. All right, it's been moved and supported. Does everybody understand it then? Yep. yep. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, roll call, please. Mr. Boda. Yes. Mr. Petsalis. Yes. Mr. Horn. Yes. Mr. Blackstock. Yes. Cram, yes. Mr. Simons. Yes. Motion carries. Larry, would they if you if you apply for it in 2014, will they let you use it in 2015? Will they let us do it? Will yeah. let us defer it? You can okay. actually defer it for several years. We have we, we have some sitting since 2012. 11. Okay. You put it together to do a big project. You yeah, just you have can, to tell them ahead of time what you're going to okay. do. Yeah. But you have to earmark what you're going to use it for. Okay. And that's what we're doing now. All right, next, under new business, we have um, item four, the MTA attendance to the convention. I don't know if anybody's interested in going to it, but if you are, the deadline for the, um, well, not the deadline, but the start of getting your reservations is tomorrow as far as hotel rooms and accommodations. When I went last year to Traverse City, I was a little late getting my accommodations. I ended up three and a half miles away from there. It was terrible. <laughs> I will not go back to Traverse City again because they don't have enough rooms at the where they had the convention. So Where's this one at this year? Robert? This one's in Grand Rapids. Um, I, I would like to have permission to go, and I would hope somebody else would like to go with me, but that's up to you guys. I, it, it's actually the 27th, 28th, 29th of January. 
Uh, I think it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And the closing meeting is Friday morning. I don't, I would like to go on, um, I don't want to go for the opening the day before. I'd like to go on the 28th and 29th, come home on the 30th, the three days. I'll make a motion that we allow the supervisor to attend the Michigan Townships Association meeting, <coughs> excuse me, in Grand Rapids for January 28th and January 29th, and for any other member that may want to go. I'll support that. Okay, it's been moved and supported that we allow anybody on the board to go to the MTA convention. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Blackstock. Yes. Mr. Petsalis. Yes. Mr. Horn. Yes. Mr. Boda. Yes. Cram, yes. Mr. Simons. Yes. Motion carries. All right, item five under new business. Uh, appoint Mary Alice Pickering to the Park Commission for the unfinished term of James Fry. Is that fine with the Parks Commission? This came from their recommendation. Oh, okay. I asked the Park Commission for a recommendation for a uh, we, replacement. We had a few recommendations and then we, we allowed the board to kind of, you know, make a decision on who was going to be selected. Well, if the Park Commission has requested, I'll make a motion that we appoint Mary Alice Pickering to the Park Commission for the unfinished term of James Fry. I'll support. It's been moved and supported that we appoint Mary Alice Pickering to the Park Commission. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next we have item six, set the 2015 budget public hearing for November 3, 2014 at 715. That'll be prior to our next meeting. I'll make the motion. Support. It's been moved and supported that we have the public hearing on November the 3rd, 2014 at 7.15. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. One more thing to add to that, we will be having a uh, budget meeting for the board sometime between now and the 3rd when we get it finalized. All right. Next, we're moving on to old business. We have the cemetery, cemetery tree quotes, and I got the river park quotes in there also. Uh, the park commission asked me if we could get those trees cut down next to the bathroom. There's uh, two big poplar trees down yeah, there. Yeah, they're terrible. And they're, they're disrupting the, the sidewalk, and they're afraid one of them's gonna fall in the bathroom. And, uh, <laughs> well, somebody's gonna trip on the roots for yeah. a long time. So, Is that the cemetery tree? And we, you're and talking about? River, river park. No, across from right Marwood. across from the Marwood. Okay. It's actually two different quotes, Angela. Okay. But I, I seeing as though I always bid them, I bid them together. I mean, there's two separate things in your pages there. Should have two separate on each one. <coughs> I just see the one quote, though, on Perot's Hill Cemetery from uh, in Kevin's. I just see Kevin's. five trees. That's all I see yeah. is five trees from Kevin's. Just the one quote. I mean, he doesn't talk about anything else. He just talks about five trees where all the other ones all are talking the, about. All in the cemetery. Oh, where's the other ones? It's on a separate sheet. It's on a separate sheet over here on the side. Uh, I don't know why they copied it like this, trying to save paper, I guess. No. Yeah, there's a cemetery set. and then Right here it is, 1975 on that and 1750 for the cemetery. This is for Marwood. 1975. Oh, okay, we saved paper. I see what we did, put half and half. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> and the other one is for the uh, cemetery. Okay. So my understanding is Biscarner's offering a $500 discount? Correct, but even with the 500 discount, he's still higher than the, than, than the Kevins. Uh, do the math and see what, like, double check it. 1750. Yeah, Kevins is at $3,600, $3,700. Thirty-seven twenty-five, right? Yeah, if he had the nineteen seventy-five, to this figure. Where the hell did you see the other one? I it's right here. Uh, they, they're putting the papers together. So, so uh, he's that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Twenty-four, he paper, yeah. thirty-four. He's four thousand dollars if you do them separately. No. If he doesn't get both, or thirty-five hundred if he no, does them both. This is the other one. I got thirty. Sorry, I don't know which one's the 
What is it? I just uh, did it quickly. It's 16. 24 for the cemetery and 16 for the park. If you do both, so that's four grand. If you do both, if he gets both jobs, then it's 3,500 for both. That's the one I got. Okay. So then if you compare Kevin's. Kevin is seventeen fifty for the cemetery, and he well, is. He's got another bid in for nineteen seventy five for the park. He's got another bid in for the cemetery at sixteen fifty. Kevin, that's your old one, there. No, that's the new one. The old one was seventeen fifty. As I say, he's got two bids in here. Oh. Well, then that was a error in the Not in this packet, he doesn't. I don't have In the new ones we just got. That's I only got the one. 17. This is the one I pulled out of packet two meetings ago. Right, that's the old stuff. That's the old bit. That's the old one for 1650 Right. And the new one, he's got 1750 Right, because before they weren't hauling it away and they weren't grinding all the stumps, they changed the job. So the old ones are useless now. So then that's fine. So, so, so what do you want? It's 3725 for both jobs. Right. So he's so right, 3725 oh, yeah. for him. And Timbers is 18 and 24. That's two, three, is... four, 42. Yeah, see, I so didn't get this one. Biscarners is the cheapest if we give them right. both jobs. Right. Timbers is. I just can give them both jobs and be done with this. this I mean, that's what I thought was when we did it, right? Yes. This, 18 this KCA services. Yeah, that was another company I was looking for companies to bid this to because we, you know, and I knew that person, so they turned in a bid, but they only turned it in for the park, I believe. Okay, yeah, because I was going to say they're yeah. at 3,000, but they don't have everything. They that don't we have want. The, They didn't turn in for down at the. Right, they're, they're charging three just for the cemetery. Okay, right. So we're not splitting the jobs up between companies. You want to keep the same company? I would jobs. I would think we should, don't you? And that's the cheapest way to go, too, with this gunner's Timbers is 24 and 18. 24 and 42. 18 would be... 42. They're at 42. The other one's at 36. And then um, this is at 35. Yeah, if he gets both is, jobs. Because that's the cheapest one I got. And 18. The lowest bid I see on there. So I didn't have that other. The only thing I requesting now when we give this bid out is that we coordinate the time that we do this so we don't tear the cemetery up with as wet as it is. I just mm -hmm. don't want to turn them loose in there and um, and rot up our cemetery. Um, Probably should wait till it freezes. Well, yeah, and I can talk to the contractor. I'm sure there'll be more than. Uh, Willing to work well, they'd with rather. Us. I think a lot of them rather cut trees in the winter anyhow, in case right. they drop which, one. It ain't going to bang in the ground. Which one do it now? You're going to have. Uh, Biscarners is the cheapest one. Biscarners was the lowest. The question I have on uh, uh, Biscarners is, he, what is he going to be doing at the River Road Park? He's going to cut those two trees down. And two poplars. It's on the back of the park one. You'll find not on that one. The loose single page has the back floor. side, There's the separate one. park. Right right here. Oh, yeah, boy, you got to really mess this up. <laughs> Those should have been all together on one, I think. Yeah. He's going to remove the trees, everything hauled okay, away, everything stumps all the way, ground. Stumps right. Ground. Okay, for sixteen hundred. Okay. And then he actually turned in three separate sheets of paper to us. Right. The two jobs. Through that five hundred discount, it's four. If you do them together, you, okay, all right. Got so it. I guess we're we all come to the conclusion. Biscarner Tree Service is the cheapest one at thirty five hundred, right? Are you going to grind all stumps? Yep, haul yep. yeah. everything away and grind everything. Because I don't have that one proposal. It was seventeen. This is, this is, this is the, yeah, them trees at the river park 16. are bad. You got that old one. There. You got to get rid of that old one. There's his bottom line right there. 3,500. So if he does both jobs, it's going to be 35, and nobody was close to that. The only closest one was Kevin's at 3725. So 3725. So. And Timbers was at 42. That other guy just bid 3,000 on the one. Timbers is at 42. These got all, all these got insurance, don't they? Liability. They've all, that was part of the bid. They had to have yep. insurance. We can ask for the documentation. <laughs> if 
we're going to do it as a combined, do we just need one motion or do we need two separate motions? I would think uh, one motion would probably be enough to um, give it to Biscounter Tree Services to do the cemetery and the river park tree cutting. For $3,500. For $3,500. I'll make that motion. Okay. Support. It's been moved and supported that we award the tree cutting bid of the cemetery and the park to Biscarner Tree Service, um, Delaware Street, East China. Any further discussion? If not, roll call, please. Mr. Blackstock. Yes. Mr. Boda. Yes. Mr. Horn. Yes. Mr. Petsalis. Yes. Cram, yes. Mr. Simons. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, next we have the resolution I was talking to you about for the um, <coughs> for the local county road funding assistance program. And I'll read that resolution number 10-2414, local road yeah. system funding assistance program. Minutes of the regular meeting of the township board of the Charter Township of East China County of St. Clair, Michigan, held in the Township Hall on the 20th day of October 2014 at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. The following resolution was offered by myself and supported by... Oh, that's a sport. Okay. sport. Whereas the St. Clair County Road Commission has established a local road county... Local road system funding assistance program through policy number 75 is revised October 6th of 2009, and whereas the local road system funding assistance program provides matching funds to the township for the improvements of local roads in St. Clair County, and whereas the said match funds are available to townships on an annual basis up to $100,000 per project, and whereas the Charter Township of East China has identified a need to improve Springborn Road using the local road fund local road assistance system funding assistance program and now th therefore be it resolved that the charter township of east china makes application to the st Clair county road <coughs> commission for funding under the local road system funding assistance program for the year 2015 for the above named road furthermore supervisor larry simons be authorized to sign the application on behalf of the charter township of east china all resolutions and part of resolutions insofar as they conflict with, the, with this provision of this resolution be the same and hereby are rescinded. No support. It's been moved and supported that we uh, apply to the St. Clair County Local Road System Funding Pro Assistance Program. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we're moving on to announcements. Um, we have Halloween uh, trick-or-treat on Friday, October 31st, 2014. Um, evidently, there's some conflicting times with Marine City is moving theirs to another day. I think we're going to leave ours right on Friday. Um, it seems to be the consensus. We've advertised it. We've put it on our calendar. Um, so I think we're going to leave ours at Friday. Is that all right with everybody on the board? Yes. Okay. Um, I guess that's it. Would this be a good time if I have an announcement? I maybe should have done it during public comment. Yeah, yeah, if you want to make an announcement, go ahead and just oh. identify yourself up there. My name is Cindy Bowdown. I'm the chair of the Park Commission. Um, our residents are going to be finding our gate to the soccer side closed. Um, coming up, we're going to be starting a project over on that side, doing some repairs on the baseball fencing. And our softball bathroom is now closed because we're doing some repairs on that bathroom. So that's the reason this gate, the soccer gate, is closed. And hopefully that project's going to start this week. And the bathroom project's been kind of ongoing. And but that bathroom is closed now, so for the season, just so everybody knows why. And when will the park be closing? Um, I think it's November 1st. The park actually closes down. 
Okay. But but the the gate always stays open at the sledding hill if anybody wants to walk or get in and during the winter if there's nice days and we open the other main gate. So. Okay. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to members' comments. Mr. Horn. I have nothing tonight, Larry. Mr. Purcell. Nothing tonight, Larry. Thank you. Mr. Boda. Nothing for me. Thank you. Okay. I have one item. Um, it's probably something that we should probably put on our agenda in the next meeting if we could. Uh, it's been brought to my attention. I guess we had a, a, a question posed to me. Um, since we've been cutting so many trees down in our parks and throughout our township, a question has come up as to whether or not there is a set procedure for disposing of the wood. I'm sorry, for disposing of the wood that is cut down. And okay, not for the same thing. Not the branches per se, but, but the larger the hunks, yeah. wood. Firewood. More Firewood. Um, I, I, in talking with Larry, that there's really no set procedure for right. removing it or giving away or selling it. There's nothing. And there's been a variety of methods done over the years. And with the amount of trees that we're, we're starting to remove, uh, I, I think it, it, it might need some attention. As what do we do with that wood now? Uh, well, so different we people have been taking it. Okay. Give them away. Exactly. Apparently, these people are going to the ones we just approved. Those They're are going to haul it away. Those are hauling it away. I think if what's left there, we probably should try to sell it as firewood. There's, you'll always get bids on it. But yeah, we should not go. It's, it's, it's up to the we lot. it's up to the park commission. Well, no. Right now, we got a lot, but normally we don't. Mm -hmm. um, but I, get, I think we should just get some kind of policy in place on how we're going to deal with it. Right. Because there's a lot of dead ash over there. You guys just cut a few of them down, and there's I think she's got 90 trees marked over there, doesn't she? So there's a lot of wood over there. We just yeah. got 20, um, 20 trees that we had marked you know, to cut down. And there was another tree that fell while they were over there cutting. It was a live tree. And there was another tree that fell during a baseball game earlier, maybe a month earlier than that. And we have like 70 other trees besides those 20 that the park manager had marked. So the DPW is going to work on some of them over the winter. But you're not supposed to transport ash wood. Right. I think that's beyond that now. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're all good now. You couldn't, you couldn't uh, transport it across I think it was county lines or yeah, something. That for point. a while there, a few years they ago. They stayed within the county. It was all right. But, uh, so right now it's something everybody should think about. And we don't want that wood to just sit there and rot. And no. Do you want me to put it on the next agenda and you, you guys can have a little time to think down. about it? From where it is. Yeah. I put you it should get story. something out of it. That curb suggested the next agenda put on that. You know, okay. I, I don't know. It's something to talk about and think about. Oh, is the park manager still on? Yes. She's there. Um, she's at least going to be there till November 1st, possibly a little longer this year. You know, it's just going to depend on the leaves and the projects going on and all of that. So. And maybe I, I should ask one thing in my comments. Are you done, Herb, or do you have more? No. Is that going to be fine? I'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you guys can think and gals can think about it. Um, talking with these different people that do trees, like I talked with Timbers and I've talked with these other tree people, um, it seems that most cities have a contract with a Pacific, they bid out a contract with a Pacific tree cutter to cut their trees in their cities you know, that come up in a 12-month period. Maybe that's something we could look at if we end up having. Then we wouldn't have to go through all this bidding. Right. We'd already have, yeah. you know, set rates by the hour. Or I could check into that and see how they actually bid it. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, I know the city is... Right, if we were to get a big storm and we had trees down, I mean, uh, where does our responsibility lie? I don't know. If we had a lot... I guess the county would actually be doing the roads, but... Correct. was just one tree and it was in the walkway it was on the bike path between this side of the park and the soccer side and, um, in the past our dpw has been cutting almost all our trees unless we get these ones like we have in the cemetery 
you know, it sets over 15 or 20 stones, and I don't want to damage any stones, no. so that's why they got to come in with a, uh, some kind of a bucket truck and take it down. And last year there was so much snow that, that our DPW wasn't right. able to get in there at all. Into the park. Okay. All right. Um, if that all you have then, Herb? Yes. All right, a couple of things. Uh, I told some of you is we've got a, a major thing going on in the sewer plant. Um, above and beyond our project that we're working on, these RCBs, which are these rotating wheels. We broke a shaft in one. So uh, I've got Wade Trim getting us some kind of quotes or trying to narrow it down as to uh, roughly what it'll cost us. I think we all remember when they presented it to us a couple years ago, it was roughly a million dollars to do those RCBs. Um, we have five of them, one is broke. Uh, Dion assures me we can run with three. Um, it's something I think uh, there's gonna be lead time when we even decide to do it. It's probably gonna be six months to a year to get the thing made. And it has to be a whole different um, system as far as what drives them. They're assuring me that we can probably put the RCBs, the same wheels with the plastic on, but the drive unit on them is going to have to be different, so there'll be some modifications. So I'm getting some prices like we did when we did the, the certain things at the sewer plant. There'll be line items. So they're breaking that down for me right now. Larry, I know Ralph had asked, um, can, can we get, can we rebuild the shaft? Uh, no. No. I went over and looked at it. Dion, we looked at it. Way Trim looked at it. I mean, you, you got to see this thing. Just, you just, there's no way that you can put, get that. It's like the, the fins on it are preformed on. It's actually a 12-inch square shaft. Wow. And then it's round at the ends where the bearings are at. But they have a history of breaking. Um, I think you guys can remember when they gave us our, their, um, you know, uh, phase one, two, and three. And then Dan said, well, we've never had any trouble with them, so that's why we kind of shelved it. Right. But now we got a problem. So, But Way Trims and the uh, their guru that works on these sewer plants saying that we're – really fortunate that we've made it 30 years with these things yeah, and sure it's never 30, had a major problem. Uh, you're years. probably more familiar, Don. You're on the yeah. sewer authority. Yeah, um, it's been at least 30 years. Well, they're new since Lucky. the plant was there. Right. They're, they're original. They were put in when the plant was built. They actually picked that one out, and the one they picked out weighed 40 ton. Wow. Is there any chance of use one coming from someplace, you know. I've yeah, I never thought about that, so yeah. Speak, Somebody so. like us that's getting rid of it, we got four good ones there. Yeah, let's say somebody else, you know, maybe we can grab one off them. Yeah, we can, we can ask about that. Or even contact the MTA, I wonder if they would know anything through other townships. Yeah, the good idea, Don. <laughs> but, I mean, we're talking a big deal to transport these things. I mean, you're going to have to be special permit and whatever. But, yeah, I can check on that. I just wanted you just to know that that's going on. Another thing I, I'm looking at trying to do here is uh, do a CPR class and first aid training for all of our employees. Um, it hasn't been done in years and years and years. And it, in Illinois, it? Huh? It's just never been done for the board members. As far as I know. Now, according to uh, Mike McLeod, that they did it in past years. Yeah, for the employees, but I don't think they did it for uh, board members. No, I don't want the board. Well, your board members are welcome, but I, I think we should, um, I think we should at least do it for our employees. Yeah. You know that all employees know how to do that. Um, I'm sure you can contact the Marine City Fire Department. I've already contacted them. We, we already got prices, and uh, yeah. it's just a matter of setting it up, and we may even coordinate it with Marine City. Or somebody else and have a group and and have them come in. It's actually done by Tricon Hospital. They uh, they do all the paperwork. That's mostly what we're paying for is the books, mm -hmm. and the fire department puts it on for a very minimal charge. Okay. So that'll be something I'm going to be working on. And the bridge down there on Point Drive is still under construction. They're assuring me it's going to be done uh, late November, probably the 22nd. I think is what the date they're putting out there. We did the Dolphin water line. That's in and running. Uh, we have a little restoration work to do yet. Um, but everything really went smooth on that job. It was worked out really well. Uh, not a lot of uh, damage, very minimal. Um, of course, it costs us a lot of money to do that directional boring versus an open cut. Um, 
those are just some of the things that are going on in the township. So we're getting a few of these projects done. We got a lot more projects to do. One and be in the roof here, the roof in the chapel. That'll be my next thing I'll work on, getting some quotes on those roofs. Uh, some people have shown an interest in getting metal roofs. Um, I think I'm going to price it both ways, the metal and the and the shingles. And we'll. I know Herb is working with me on that, getting some quotes on that. So, other than that, that's all I've got. So, uh, is the work still going on at the Edison plant with all the new construction? That's still ongoing. Still ongoing. I heard him driving piling over there the other night. Yeah, yeah, that's still going on. Um, I could check with my building inspector and see how far we are. I don't know. I don't know where they're at. They've they've pulled a lot of permits. Um, you need to check on Coast Heights too with your building inspector. Oh uh, what? Coast Heights. Oh, second I, stories. Yeah, I think we got we got that part of that cleared up. I just had a discussion with the with the planning commission. Um, with that, I guess the motion to adjourn would be in order. I'll make a motion that we adjourn at 8.41. Support. The move is supported that we adjourn at 8.41. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.